the fire and the hammer of God. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Jeremiah likens God's word to a hammer. One of the first things we'd use a hammer for would be pounding or even breaking. That's the picture God paints concerning His holy word. It functions like a sledgehammer, shattering and breaking down. That's exactly how Jeremiah understood God's word to be used. Other areas of scripture accordingly echo this. Hebrews 4:12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It's been said that the pen is mightier than the sword. What that means is that words can be powerful. Words can be weapons. A careless, harsh word can cut a person like a knife. Words can also be helpful tools. Wise words spoken at the right time can prevent tragedy. A kind word can also provide comfort and consolation to someone who's hurting. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 The weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of the world. Instead, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Jeremiah 23, 29 Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? There are different comparisons of the word of God in the Bible. It is compared to food, a seed, a lamp, and a light, among others. In Jeremiah 23, 29, it is compared to a fire and a hammer. Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? The first part of that scripture compares the word of God to a fire. Fire can be a blessing or a curse. A fire that is uncontrolled is dangerous. It burns and destroys. Jeremiah said of the word of God, For when I spoke, I cried out, I shouted, violence and plunder. Because the word of the Lord was made to be a reproach and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart, like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. In that scripture, Jeremiah compared the effect of the word of God in his heart and bones to the burning heat of the physical fire, and he couldn't contain it or hold it inside him. He must release the word. Proverbs 6.27 asks, Can a man take fire to his bosom, and his clothes not be burned? The obvious answer is no. The word of God in his servant is like a fire he cannot take to his bosom. It must be released. He feels fulfilled after releasing or delivering the word God has given him. It must feel the same to us. We might think we can contradict his word to find freedom and happiness, but in the end, we find ourselves playing with lies. The Lord smashes down our defenses, breaking our strong lies and crushing our self-reliant hearts. At the same time, God uses His powerful Word to build up our hearts. God breaks down the stubborn casing to get to the heart of the issue, rotten, sin-infested hearts. He reveals all weakness and frailty so that He can replace it. The Word is amazing. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 We tear down arguments and every presumption set up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought 
to make it obedient to Christ. The Word of God is also a destructive fire to the enemy. God said He would make His Word in the mouth of Jeremiah become fire, and the house of Israel and house of Judah would become wood for lying about the Lord, and fire shall devour them. If God could treat His rebellious children this way, what do you think will happen to those He has no covenant with? The Word of God in the mouth of His children is fire to the enemy. However, His children must walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Allow the Word of God to work in your life. The Word is the tool that can deal with the vices of man. What are the vices of man? The Bible lists the following vice in the lives of man that the fire and hammering effect of the Word overcomes, according to Galatians 5, 19-20. It's clear that our flesh entices us into practicing some of its most heinous acts, participating in corrupt sexual relationships. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Impurity if you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Unbridled lust. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Idolatry. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Witchcraft. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Hatred. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Arguing. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Jealousy. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Anger. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Selfishness. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Contentiousness. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Division. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Envy of others' good fortune. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Drunkenness. If you are caught up in this, may the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you. Drunken revelry. If you are caught up in this, May the fire of God and the Word of God deliver you, and any other shameful vices that plague humankind. I told you this clearly before, and I only tell you again so there is no room for confusion. Those who give in to these ways will not inherit the kingdom of God. God breaks down the stubborn casing to get to the heart of the issue. Rotten, sin-infested hearts. He reveals all weakness and frailty so that He can replace it. The Holy Spirit smashes down our stubborn hearts, rips out all that is rotten, and replaces it with good. He reminds us that God hammered His own Son in our place. He hammered Him to the cross. Christ Jesus suffered for our stubbornness, doubt, and worry. He was nailed to the cross for our hard hearts. If we walk in the flesh, His Word may never have any effect. This is the reason some people complain that the Word of God is not working. The children of God cannot be disobeying His Word and expect His Word to work for them, except by His mercy. Jesus said His disciples must abide in Him and let His words abide in them for their prayers to be answered. Many times a hammer does not break the rock in pieces at once. It must be applied consistently for some time. Every blow weakens the rock inside, 
although this may not be obvious. But there is one last blow that completely breaks it to pieces. However, the result is a product of all the blows. The followers of Christ must consistently apply the Word of God, even if it appears there is no result or noticeable impact. The result will soon be obvious if they faint not.